Hi everyone! Welcome to Monica's Singapore Kitchen. Today I'll be cooking a unique dish that includes a vibrant selection of ingredients like crispy prawn fritters, coconut fritters, fried tau kwa, tempeh and potatoes served with a delicious sweet potato peanut gravy. This dish is called Indian Rojak if you are in Singapore. It is called Rojak Mamak if you are in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And it is called Persambo in Penang. This is where I come from. Come along with me to see how this dish is prepared. First, you need to cook the Rojak sauce. So for that, you will need to blend Bombay onions which are roughly chopped, garlic roughly chopped, salted prawns, lemongrass roughly chopped, fresh turmeric roughly chopped, shrimp paste, dried chilli powder. I also added a cup of water to help with the blending process. So our plan is to blend it until it is smooth, fine and silky. Okay, something like that. Can you see that the paste is smooth, fine and silky? Because I want my rojak sauce to be very creamy. So that's why the paste has to be creamy as well. Now let's move on to the sweet potatoes. I have chosen the Indonesian honey sweet potato as this variety is sweet, creamy and fluffy. It has a long and irregular shape. The skin is speckled with petite eyes and root hairs. The color of the skin is golden brown. Let's take a look at the color inside. It looks orangey brown when it is uncooked. But then uh, when you cooked it, I steamed it, so it turns a deeper orangey yellow when it is cooked. So we need to blend this sweet potato as well. So put it inside the blender. The sweet potato, we need to put in a cup of water to blend it. So again, we need to blend it until it's fine, smooth and creamy. Can you see how creamy it is? Yep, it's beautiful, the colour. Okay, so let's cook our paste. So heat up half a cup of oil, pour in our spice paste. So our plan is to stir fry it for 10 minutes. So continue to stir fry it for about uh, 5 minutes first and see how it goes. Yeah, make sure that the oil mixes totally with the paste. So five minutes later, you can see that our paste is slightly more dry. It is still evaporating. The water is still evaporating. You can see that it is fogging my lens. Sorry about that. And uh, continue to stir fry uh, for another five minutes over medium high heat. So 10 minutes later, you can see that my paste is more dry. It is a darker color and the oil has separated from the paste. So this is a good time for us to add our uh, blended sweet potato. So mix the two ingredients thoroughly. So the next thing to do is to add some water. I've added three cups of water. Now at this point, the amount of water depends on the consistency that you are trying to achieve. So to achieve the consistency that uh, this video is showing, I use three cups of water. If you want it to be a bit thinner in consistency, add a bit more water. Or if you want to go the other way around, you want it to be thicker, add less than three cups of water. So after stirring for five minutes, add a bit of sugar, a bit of salt, uh, ikan bilis powder and also tamarind water. So stir fry and cook for 5 minutes. Okay, so now we are going to make our rojak fritters. For that, we need to make a basic dough which consists of all-purpose flour, rice flour, corn flour, 
instant yeast. I use the instant variety. Then just pour it into the dough. Then the sugar, minced dried prawns, two tablespoons of that, ikan bilis powder. So stir all these ingredients uh, thoroughly. Make sure that all the ingredients are mixed together. So add the salt last because you do not want the salt to affect the, the yeast. So continue to stir until it is all mixed thoroughly. Then add the warm water. It's about 40 degrees Celsius. I have added 550 milliliters of warm water. Add and stir simultaneously. Okay, so slowly stir so that our mixture is nicely mixed up. Okay, so looks like it is good now. So what we need to do next is to rest it for one hour. So we're going to cover it and uh, wait for one hour. So one hour later, you can see that our dough has nicely fermented. You can see bubbles on the surface and mini eruptions. So the plan is to divide this dough into two, dough one and dough two. So just roughly about half of it goes to dough one and the other half we'll call it dough two. Okay, dough one will be our vegetable and prawn dough. So for this, we add turmeric powder, uh, shallots finely chopped, carrots julienne, ku chai 3cm in lengths, chilies finely chopped. Okay, so then you stir it so that all these ingredients mix thoroughly. Okay, so our prawn vegetable dough, which we call dough one, is ready. Put it aside. Let's go to dough two, our coconut fritter dough. Just add 200 grams of grated coconut. The, uh, this is the fresh grated coconut that you can get from the supermarket. So also mix well. Now we can fry our fritters. So put enough water, uh, oil into our pan, into our pot. So when the oil is still getting hot, stick a ladle into the oil to heat it up. So when do we know that the oil, oil is ready? So stick a chopstick, part of it goes into the oil. And you can see, can you see the bubbles emitted? Yep. So this shows that our oil is ready for us. Okay, so uh, leave about half a teaspoon of oil in our metal ladle and pour in the vegetable dough, about two tablespoons of it, and top it with a prawn. Okay, then uh, dip it into the hot oil and we are going to cook this for four minutes or until it turns golden brown. So don't touch it until one minute later. Normally I wait for one minute before we will just ease it out from our ladle. So heat up the ladle in between uh, each round. Yeah? So you need to heat it up first so that it doesn't stick. So leave about half a teaspoon of oil. Then put in our batter. And then to top it with a prawn. So leave it under the oil for one minute. Do not touch it. So after one minute, it can be easily dislodged. So during this four minutes, turn the fritter from time to time. So we want to achieve a golden brown color on each side. Okay, once it turns golden brown, drain it on a stack of kitchen paper. So continue to fry the prawn fritter. Okay, so now we move on to our next fritter, just vegetable for those people who are allergic to seafood, especially prawns. So you can omit the prawns, so just drop the batter into the hot oil. So it will float 
instantly yeah it, it will just uh, you know very easy for us to cook it because it's right on top here so we want to fry it for about two minutes on each side so turning it from time to time so once it turns golden brown take it out and drain on a stack of kitchen paper as well okay so our vegetable fritter without prawns and with prawns are ready so let's put this aside now we go on to our coconut fritter so uh, this is very simple just take about two tablespoons of the dough and drop it into the hot oil so do not overcrowd the fritter as this will cause the oil to cool down causing our fritter to become oily and soggy so about five or six of them and then we'll just wait for it to be golden brown so we want to fry it for about four minutes approximately so normally i fried it at medium high flame so okay the color is getting to be golden brown but it's not quite there yet so continue to turn it until it is nicely golden brown so once it turns this color you can take it out and drain on a piece of paper okay so take it out okay so our coconut fritter is ready all right the other things that i fried are very simple i use um, two two pieces of firm tau kwa i cut into half each piece and just lightly brown in my hot oil i also fried some uh, fish cake i lightly brown the fish cakes and a piece of tempeh i cut into finger shape and uh, finger size and also uh, lightly brown it yep so here we go our fried tau kwa fish cake and tempeh are ready so how to serve so you take a little bit of each so our coconut fritter it's very crispy our prawn fritter i also boiled some potatoes to go with it yep so just boiled potatoes and some boiled uh, eggs so don't forget some julienne bang guang yep so normally in penang we call this pasum bor this dish so we have a lot of uh, bang guang which i really really love and also julienne cucumber as topping so okay so you can just put some bombay onions some red chilies and some green chilies isn't it beautiful yep so okay so our platter is almost ready you can top it with uh, hard boiled eggs one piece or two pieces as you like so i keep my sauce warm in a steamboat pot because i like my sauce to be warm when i enjoy this dish so this sauce can be served on the side uh, some people like to pour all over the platter uh, you might want to pour the sauce all over the ingredients before you enjoy it or you might want to dip your ingredients one at a time into the sauce it is super delicious however you enjoy it hope you give this dish a try someday thank you for stopping by and as always happy cooking